Um, our first speaker is uh, Hinal Hajal. Hinal is a junior at UCLA studying applied math with a specialization in computing. She's passionate about the intersection of data science and criminal justice. Currently, she's working with Dr. Phil Chodrow in the Department of Mathematics at UCLA to analyze disparities in Virginia's criminal sentencing records. Outside of class, she's involved in activities relating to mentorship and pedagogy, data journalism, and combating period poverty. Um, and I'm exhausted just uh, just hearing about it all. And Hinal, um, we are so thrilled to have you and uh, the floor is yours. Hi everyone, thank you. Um, I'm just gonna share my screen real quick. I can... can you see my screen? Oh yeah, awesome. So hi, I am Hinal and and um, I'm a junior at UCLA studying applied math. I am very interested in the intersection of data science and criminal justice. And I have been working on this project to collect and analyze data about Virginia's criminal sentencing records. But before I talk more about this project and the actual process of it, I wanted to talk a bit about why this matters and why we worked on it. Um, so the JASCAR paper showed us that there is evidence of racial bias in criminal sentencing at the federal level, but a lot of sentencing does happen at the state level and not every state has the same uh, standard process. And so we can't analyze all of this data just all together. And that's why we begin, we begin with the first state, we begin with one state of Virginia to answer the question, um, do some judges give more racially biased sentences than others? Um, another motive for us was also to make data about judges publicly available, as Dr. Chad Topaz mentioned in his video. Um, a lot of this data is public in theory. However, it's often not easily accessible or obtainable. And I will talk more about this in the coming slides. How I'm going to structure this presentation is basically how I worked on the project. First, talk about the data collection, which I worked on with my classmate, Christine Gu, and then the data exploration and the statistical analysis. So where do we get our data from? Every, not every state, a lot of states in the US um, have this kind of a case search portal where they upload information about the cases that they send. And Virginia had a similar website where we got the case, but where, where we got the case details from. And this kind of brings me to issue about data and availability number one, which is that not every, um, not every state does have this kind of a portal. And even those that do, don't really um, have any kind of, not don't really have the kind of data that we'd like, for example, the defendant's demographics or, um, or the judge's information. Another issue is that the, um, the, there's no just one single list of all cases possible. There's no list that you can just kind of download as a CSV. You would often just have to search up a case by a case number or a name and then access those details. And so we scraped um, Virginia's website using the scrape by library in Python. More details, uh, more technical details can be um, found in our methodology, methodolo I'm so sorry, oh my God, 7 a.m. on a Sunday, methodolo methodology uh, and um, more details on methodology and our code can be found on our GitHub, which I'll link at the end of the presentation. Okay, so what's interesting is that when we looked at the case details on the website, we did not find the judge's information and that was pretty sad. But when we looked at the code and we began scraping, we did find the judge's initials, which is so interesting that they chose not to expose the details of the um, judge on the website, but it was actually accessible. So we began the scraping and we obviously faced certain challenges. One of them was that our web, the Virginia website was a dynamically loaded website, which Simply put means that the URL of the website stayed the same no matter which case we clicked on. And so we couldn't use 
previous scraping methods that we were familiar with, we had to use the networks panel in developer tools and kind of improvise on that. Another, another challenge was that we, there was a minimum search entry to get any kind of results. And so we needed to input at least two letters to get whatever we wanted. And so to get all the possible cases, we looked at Scraper to search for every possible two-letter permutation so we could get all of the names. The third um, challenge, which wasn't so, which wasn't, which wasn't significant but still annoying, was that we had to accept the terms and conditions every time we tried to access the case details, and so we bypassed this by basically ignoring them and um, moving on to the website where they were already accepted. So after we scraped all of our data and got the judge's initials and the defendant's information, we wanted to actually convert these initials to the judge's full names. And how we did this was that we looked at the individual circuits, um, circuit courts homepages, and we got the active judges names and other information. And since, since this, these websites only had information for the current year, we got we got the previous search judges by using Wayback Machine. So we scraped all these and by using some merging factors such as the year, the court, obviously the initials, and some merging tools such as um, Pandas and Python, we were able to convert the um, initials to, into the full names. So after we got all this data, cleaned it, organized it, we were finally ready for the exciting stuff, which was some data exploration. And I wanted to share with you all some simple snippets of what I worked on for the data exploration. So over here, I got the um, demographics of every county in Virginia and compared it with, um, with the demographics of criminal cases in that particular county. So in this visualization, we, we see the data for one particular county and we can see that there's there is a discrepancy in the percentage of black people that are convicted versus the percentage of black people that are in the population. And to kind of look deeper into this and see if this trend follows within other counties as well, I created this visualization, which looks at um, more counties. And you can see that, that that difference still exists. There is variation across counties with some counties having more extreme differences. and which raises more questions about why that is. Um, here we have a distribution of the number of cases over time by race. And we see that there's an interesting spike starting in around 2012 and a, a huge fall in around 2019, which can be explained, uh, I think, um, using the pandemic. This one um, is one of my favorites, which shows the demographic distribution by race for each judge. So it shows what the demographic distribution was for all of the cases assigned to all of the judges in this particular county. And we see that the distribution looks more or less equal, which would imply that maybe there is random assignment of cases to judges, maybe the cases are just randomly assigned. And these kind of analyses and exploration kind of help shape our um, statistical analysis. And for example, we know to check for random or non-random assignment, we know that there is some variation across counties. So maybe there's a hierarchical structure where the judges are nested within, um, where the de defendants are nested within judges and then the judges are in turn nested within courts. Almost everything that I've learned about the statistical analysis in, con in the context of criminal sentencing has been through reading, um, reading the just fair paper, reading papers that the just fair paper cited, reading, statistic reading up about statistical theory, and also other R or Python blogs. I'd be more than happy to um, share these resources. So if you wanna, if you wanna learn more about that, reach out. Um, so summing up what we've achieved so far, we have a database of more than 2 million cases and insight on how the data is structured, what we should be looking for and other kinds of patterns. What's next is that we're planning to run a hierarchical linear model to see if that fits our data 
if our data meets the assumptions of it. And um, we're also working on merging the state sentencing guidelines, which I'm sure a lot of you have already worked with. In, in, the, in the state of Virginia, it's not as straightforward as it might be in other states because, um, because the state sentencing guidelines are determined by a form that someone else fills out. And so we're trying to merge these uh, merge different data sets somehow. Uh, yeah, that is it from me. What questions do you have? Oh, this I, is really great thing, uh, Hinal. Um, thank you. <laughs> Go ahead. Jared. I just wanted to say thank you, Hinal. It was both a phenomenal presentation and it's phenomenal work that you're doing. And you've, you know, blown, blown my mind this morning and I learned some things I hadn't known. And one of them is just that the fact that the way that you got the judge information was that it was buried in the metadata. And this is, you know, for people who aren't familiar with the federal just fair work, this is very similar in that the way we got our judges there was that their initials appeared at the end of a search string, basically, and that allowed us to back out the information. But I think the point is that in all of these systems, you might notice that the information is in there and there's been an active effort put into having the judge name not appear. Um, and so um, it's just such important work that you're doing, Hinal. Thank you. Yeah.